So on to the other side. Start undoing these little screws, crosshead screws. Again, same thing, JS screwdriver. If you don't have a JS screwdriver, use a standard Phillips, not a posi drive. Uh, a good fitting one, as best fitting as you can get. Uh, quite often when you buy these drill kits, you get the bits inside them. Try one of those bits, you can get, usually get a variety. And this means that you can get something that fits reasonably well. And um, unscrew these and then lift this top assembly away taking care not to let this pop off and lose this spring that's inside here Ooh. let me just uh, retrieve the screws and pop those back in wherever possible try and keep the fasteners in their respective holes like in the cap there the cap itself um, all you really need to do with this is just have a quick check of the innards, make sure there's no obvious horrendous gunk in there, that's not too bad, a bit of a wipe with a rag and that'll be fine. Slide out the spring, pop that aside, pop your finger inside the port and push up and slide out the complete slide assembly. Okay, so this is your rubber diaphragm that creates your vacuum. This is the needle, which is removable by, in this case, a large flat bladed screwdriver down in here. You can see the obvious taper of the needle now that that's out. And you can see how, as that rises up, it creates a larger gap and allows more fuel through to get sucked through with the air and go into your cylinders. And what you need to do with these these are typically not rebuildable incidentally so if you do have a torn diagram diaphragm rather you can't just buy a diaphragm and replace it as a rule you're either looking at spare parts or you can send it to a specialized company um, there are companies that will rebuild them for you which is more often than not considerably cheaper than buying a complete replacement slide and diaphragm assembly from the manufacturers because they are typically horrendously expensive what you need to do if um, even though you know it's got a reasonable vacuum just sort of have a bit of a stretch of that um, sorry so get that on camera so have a bit of a stretch and waggle it round and have a check make sure there are no tiny little pinholes or anything like that in there so you know that that's okay and then uh, make sure that there's there's no notches or the needles not bent or anything like that make sure that this is all smooth and doing its job and what you can do is pop it back in. Sometimes you'll have a little slot on the slide and that will correspond with a pin in there. If you don't, it doesn't matter. In this particular case, what you have got is a little rubber tab which corresponds with a cutout there. So it will go in and sit once it's sealed down, it will sit in one specific orientation. But in this case, it really doesn't matter. That's just for the purposes of, um, of keeping it from twisting around in use. What you can do is pop that in there and slide that with a, a finger down inside the bore there and one on the top. You just slide that in and out. Feel for any stickiness or notchiness or what have you. If necessary, clean the bore, clean this. Don't use any sandpaper, anything abrasive. Just give it a good thorough clean. Again, using a bit of petrol or carb cleaner or something similar to wipe the parts down. Try and keep any cleaners and what have you away from the rubber parts, especially the diaphragm. Although these are obviously fuel resistant because they're sat in a big bath of fuel don't uh, don't go sort of swilling it around leaving it in a bucket of petrol because you know that's uh, it's just not necessary once this is all apart you've got the bottom apart you've taken out the jets and all of the bits and pieces that you can get to you've taken off the top and all this give it a good clean out remove any jets um, this is why it's important to take photos if it's only a single carburetor if you do mess up and you've got more than one, what you can do is take note when you take the other one apart where the bits go and put them back together. Be careful that you don't lose things like little O-rings like in here, which will typically tend to get stuck in place. But as you're blasting airways through with compressed air from your compressor, these things can ping off and fly into goodness knows where. And sometimes you don't even know you've lost them until you put everything back together and nothing runs right. So have a very good visual check around before you do 
any of the sort of blowing with the compressed air or what have you check all your little nooks and crannies and, and airways and what have you because there will be lots of them so um, give that a good wipe through and make sure there's no obvious scratches or marks or what have you a spray with carb cleaner and then we'll go back onto the reassembly portion I'm just going to bring this in close and focus on it so hopefully you can see this in detail as I fold this edge back you can see that it's just very slightly started to tear this is at the lip where it seals into the carb now eventually that will go through and it will cause a problem at the moment it's usable but this is something that I will certainly be telling the owner to uh, keep an eye out for a good set of secondhand carbs or slides and rubbers or possibly a rebuild service with that in mind in fact looking at this the way that this is this is different from the way mine was and it looks like these have actually been rebuilt at some point and it looks like you can pop this out pop this plastic washer off and replace the diaphragms which is probably a good thing because if you can get a, a replacement set of replacement diaphragms for it then it means you can rebuild them so uh, yes I'll be telling the owner about that anyway because uh, it's, it's not hugely surprising because this is a, kn a known problem with the Viragos and the side mounted carburettors but give all that a good clean with a clean bit of rag or tissue make sure there's no detritus left in there and same with the spring just make sure it's clean there's no bits of grit or nastiness and like I said before with the inside of the cap just a little bit of a wipe around make sure there's no unpleasantness in there anything that would fall in there and damage anything top tip when you're replacing the slide and needle and diaphragm assembly these uh, rubber bits can become a bit of a bugger and they become less flexible with use and they can be a real sod to seat in this groove so fold it down like so very carefully slide your slide assembly into your carburetor making sure that you don't hit the needle and bend it or mar the end or anything like that line up whatever needs to be lined up in this case you've got this little uh, shaped piece in the diaphragm rubber there and push this into the groove now you'll notice because I've bent this down in this manner it will sit quite nicely in this groove because as the rubber is bent it is used to being in this position either up or down uh, while it's in the carburetor so while it sits in the groove nicely like so place the spring into the center and you need to put a finger down inside the bore to hold this uh, this plunger while you very very carefully locate the tabs inside the cap so holding that in place press this down like so until it, it makes good solid contact at which point you can let go of that slide give it a couple of presses up and back down and make sure it slides smoothly this shows that everything's seated properly if you don't get this right there's a very real danger of nipping the bead in in the groove and cutting it and I know this because the very first time I stripped and rebuilt carb I did exactly that and it cost me a new slide and diaphragm well a new pair of carburetors as it turned out to um, to scavenge the parts from which to, which was cheaper than obviously a new slide and diaphragm so and I tried prior to that I tried putting them in the freezer and all kinds of hints and tips I've picked up the one that has worked every single time without fail is this particular method I've just explained to you now so as you can see now they're they're in finger tight but you can see that that's working just fine and then at this point nip up the screws going in a crosswise pattern to make sure that's done evenly and this doesn't need to be wrenched on really really tight it just needs to be nipped up like so again ideally with the appropriate screwdriver so back to the bottom and remembering to pop the needle valve back in place in the valve needle valve seat and then slide on the float 
very easily in this case it just goes onto the pin making sure that it's the tang that you can see there contacts the needle valve this is where you would make adjustments to the fuel height by bending this tang up or down bend it up and then this will close the needle valve sooner bend it down and it will allow more fuel in and close the needle valve later and that's how you adjust the fuel height if you need to adjust the fuel height inside the float bowls. Same principle applies for a standard upright CV carb, but, um, but that's how you adjust the float height. Once that's in place, check the rubber gasket, make sure it's seated firmly in the grooves. Same kind of principle as the top, you don't want to nip this. And then you pop this on. Pop the screws back in and then just nip them up again hand tight, replacing any other bits such as this rubber pipe that you took off in the meantime. Now I'm not going to put this on just now because this really does need a good thorough clean. There's lots of rust and muck and dirt in there. So I'm going to pop that back out just for now along with the needle valve. If I can get that to, there you go. That could do with a blowout and a clean as well because that's a bit sticky in there which is not going to help fuel flow. So um, so yeah, there we go. Um, I might pop back in just a moment showing you the old because I'm not really happy with the way that slide's working. It's it's um, It doesn't seem right. So I'm going to have a look and see what's going on with that. But uh, if not, we can assume all is well. And that's essentially how to do a basic strip and clean of carburetors on a bike. Your gunja bit is your float bowl, your bottom bit. Give that a good thorough clean out. Beg, borrow or steal an airline uh, compressor. If need be, bag up your bits and go to a garage forecourt and just use one of the sort of the thumb press uh, air inflaty ones um, and blow everything clean there. But do, do be careful if you're taking it somewhere else to do that because obviously, what you absolutely do not want to do is um, is ping a jet across a forecourt and down a drain or something. Um, if at a pinch, you can use a bicycle pump. Um, and then, of course, you've got your uh, carburetor cleaner, which comes in aerosol cans. Try and do this in a relatively clean and dirt-free and dust-free environment where if something does ping off somewhere, you'll find it quite easily as well, uh, rather than a crowded sort of dirty dark garage where if it pings off into a corner you'll never find it again so i hope that was useful and thank you for watching and i just had to show you this bit with everything looking considerably cleaner and this has just had a very basic clean through and uh, had all the uh, appropriate holes and everything blown through with compressed air so quick simple cleaning you can see the difference that uh, that that makes just there